Live from KSEC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, we have the latest on a chase on the southwest side involving Bear County deputies and DPS troopers. The nation's top doctors with a warning ahead of the holiday weekend. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is 82 degrees, it is humid, but we may get some payoff soon. Maybe we won't see those triple digits as much. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is September 2nd. And as we bring in Mike Osterhage, Mike, got to be honest, checked on my radar several times overnight last night, watching those storms to our north. And it's almost like they put the brakes on and decided to go in another direction. Yeah, as soon as it hit almost like uh, Austin or just north of Austin, everything kind of, you know, stayed up there. However, there's something off to the west, which okay. is kind of moving on in here. And it is encouraging as far as rain chances are concerned uh, today and then also really the next couple of days. First of all, you look outside, it's like the same picture. I mean, the humidity. Yeah, it's just but it at least this time around some of that humidity is going to get squeezed out in the form of maybe some really hefty uh, downpours in some cases. So here's the big picture and these are some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms we were just talking about. Uh, they're now just kind of getting caught up and taken off to the northeast unfortunately. However, we do have that disturbance coming off the mountains of Mexico. A few showers are being uh, thrown out ahead of that. So maybe one or two showers around this morning and then we've got some other, you know, a couple of different spots of disturbances that are going to sort of be converging on on the area throughout the day. So we will have rain chances uh, throughout the day, about a 40, um, close to 50% chance for some rain today. Heat index right now, 94 in New Braunfels, 93 Gonzales, 89 here in town. And uh, all the allergens are on the low side this morning. So temperatures may drop down a couple of more notches. We'll still be well above normal. Normal low being 73. We're going to stay about the upper 70s, maybe some low 80s. Couple of showers scattered about the area. Then put about a 50% chance for a shower, a uh, couple of thunderstorms on it. 97. We did hit 100 yesterday and go on limb say that's it for the uh, triple digits for the next couple of days because keep a lot of clouds around and rain chances of varying degrees in the forecast through the weekend. So it is encouraging. Let's just keep all our fingers crossed. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home. Those hoping to head home soon from the overnight crew right now as we take a look at the roadways. Not too much going on out there, so we're going to switch from the map over to TransGuide. This is 37 and Fair. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can see north and southbound lanes running smoothly with no problems. 410 at Highway 151 and moving over to 410 at Fredericksburg. Roadways still look uh, pretty good, so there's plenty of room out there. And then 37 and Hackberry, north and southbound lanes right now. No delays in anyone's travel times. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. The driver led DPS troopers on a chase for several miles on the south side last night. That driver has since been arrested. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with more on how this chase started. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Well, we know at this point that it started around 950 last night near Pleasanton Road near Rayburn and Southwest Military. That's on the south side. It went on for a couple of miles, finally coming to an end at Southwest Military in Wabash, but not too far from South Zarzamora. Bear County deputies assisted DPS troopers after the chase ended. Investigators say that suspect hit a deputy's unit, but no one was hurt. DPS troopers arrested the suspect on scene. At this time, BCSO has not said what started the chase or who that driver is. BCSO has also not released if and what charges that driver will face. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Here in Bear County, the number of hospitalizations is going down and 366 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. Meanwhile, 157 are in the intensive care unit and 93 are on ventilators. Another 13 deaths were reported. Five were from the period between June 26th and August 28th. The total number of deaths is now at 822. When it comes to total cases, Bear County is reporting 222 new COVID-19 cases. Metro Health says they usually see a jump in numbers after weekends. Ahead of the Labor Day weekend, health officials warning state leaders not to let Labor Day gatherings ruin the nation's progress in the fight against the coronavirus. ABC's Ines de la Quatera is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the nation's top doctors bracing for the holiday weekend. Following the corpse, I follow Memorial Day when people understandably get out and hug because we've had surges. 
Dr. Anthony Fauci urging Americans not to let Labor Day activities ruin the progress made fighting COVID-19, especially with flu season around the corner. One thing you don't want is to play that whack-a-mole as you go into the fall. This, as the president claims on Fox News that blue state governors are keeping their states closed so as to hurt him in the upcoming election. If you look, Michigan is closed. All of these states that are closed, North Carolina is closed. These states that are closed are run by Democrats. And the reason they're closed is because we have an election on November 3rd. With and the president facing skepticism among voters that the federal government is not doing enough to address the crisis, the White House now considering launching a $250 million dollar new public health campaign on the virus. This as Democratic nominee Joe Biden continues to blast the president's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, telling our station oh, yeah, WTVD. The American people are looking for responsible leadership on COVID. They, they've, they've shared sacrifice, missing weddings, funerals, family events. It's it. They should expect the same responsibility coming from their president or presidential candidate. Meanwhile, the debate over when and how to reopen schools continues. In New York City, classes will now be delayed until September 21st to avoid a teacher strike over COVID safety demands. That has to be my first concern, is the safety of my son. That has to be. I have no other choice. New York City schools now agreeing to randomly test students and staff each month. The federal government says they plan to ship 150 million rapid tests to states to be used in the reopening of schools. In de la Guterra, ABC News, Washington. The San Antonio Independent School District has moved its target date to return for in-person athletic workouts from September 8th to October 5th. The target date to start playing games is now Thursday, October 29th. It's according to a notification sent up by SAISD Athletic Director Todd Howey to parents. October 5th, the first date student athletes can report to school for strength and conditioning. District has its own blue level of coronavirus infections it wants to reach, which is less than Metro Health's green level of 5%. The district is leaving open the possibility of moving things up if conditions improve. Here's the good thing that we heard. It could also move up. It depends on the numbers. You know, we're, we're just hoping that over Labor Day, uh, you know, just be responsible. Wear a mask. Do what you're supposed to. Clean your hands and wear your mask. And, and if the numbers go down, we will start earlier. Howie, the athletic director, said in the state, but the October 5th start date will still allow us to crown a district champion of football, volleyball, cross country tennis and participate in the UIL state playoffs at the varsity level. In addition, competitive sub varsity schedules have been modified to ensure participation at all levels. Time now is 437 and 82 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA on your Wednesday, a new study looks at whether face shields and masks with valves actually work effectively. And next, an update from the U.S. Treasury Secretary on the possibility of a bipartisan coronavirus relief package. And outside with live cam, I liked uh, Mike's push alert this morning for the uh, weather portion of our app. And he's talking about uh, relief from the heat and better rain chances. We'll get the details coming up. Just about 441, the Justice Department has released hundreds more documents from the Mueller investigation. This appears to be the last several hundred pages of witness interviews from the investigation into Russian election interference. This information has often helped explain what investigators learned about the 2016 campaign and President Trump's behavior at the time. Agents or prosecutors typed up memos after they questioned each witness. Many of them are heavily redacted. Because of that, several news agencies are still trying to make more parts of those records public. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says he hopes to reach a bipartisan coronavirus relief package. Talks between Democrats and President Donald Trump's administration on a new relief package broke down early last month. Mnuchin promised he would return to the negotiating table and said he would call House Speaker Nancy Pelosi following the hearing. Pelosi confirmed he made that call, but the two sides are still far apart on a deal. Democrats are asking for a $2.4 trillion package, though Pelosi said last week she'd be willing to go down to $2.2 trillion. That's still very far from the $1 trillion plan Senate Republicans are wanting. The winning continues on Wall Street. Stocks have welcomed September with a bang. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite both set record highs yesterday. S&P gained 26 points. The NASDAQ picked up more than 160. The Dow rebounded with 215 points, though it's still 1,000 points shy of its February high. 
Tech stocks, consumer and materials companies all helped fuel those gains. Time now, 442 and 82 degrees for now. We'll still ahead a look at how scammers are trying once again to ruin your upcoming vacation. This time they're targeting RV campers. And next, do those masks with valves really work like they're supposed to? We're going to have a first look at a new study. And welcome back. It is 445. A new study looks at two popular face coverings and whether they are actually effective. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, they may be popular, but how well do face shields and masks with valves actually work? Three, two, one. New video showing just how ineffective a face shield can be when used alone to protect against the spread of coronavirus. It's part of a new study from Florida Atlantic University. Researchers using a water and glycerin mixture to simulate a cough or sneeze from a mannequin's mouth and nose. The larger droplets, they will get stopped. But the smaller droplets, they um, follow the airstreams very, very well. So they can basically flow around the visor very easily. Researchers also testing an N95 rated mask with an exhalation valve. During exhalation, the valve opens and there's free flow of air, which is not good. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. RVs new and you seeing a sales boom right now and scammers know it. Fake ads are popping up online and they're designed to reel you in and take your money. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris with the latest twist on a familiar scheme. A 2003 Dutchman classic, new tires, new mattress, clean and ready to camp, all for $1,200. This RV is a steal of a deal. Unfortunately, we're seeing a spike in online private sellers using the pandemic as an accessory to fraud, meaning a buyer can't see the vehicle in person, can't kick the tires. From Kokomo to Charleston to College Station, we found more than a dozen Craigslist postings with the same photos. All campers bargain price to attract. We responded to one and the seller emailed that her husband had passed away two months ago and she moved. She said she prearranged a deal with eBay that her presence wasn't necessary and that eBay would send an invoice. The real eBay confirms this is a trick. Unfortunately, it's one that also works. Last year, Tyler Hooper told us she thought she was buying this Nissan. I was furious. I was just looking for any car so I can get back and forth to work. When sent a fake eBay Motors invoice, she bought eBay gift cards as instructed and gave the so-called seller the codes. Once you scratch the numbers, once you give the code away, it's gone. The money's like dollars in the wind. To protect yourself from such online scams, never buy gift cards to pay. Beware prices that are too low and don't buy what you can't see. We should be pressing for FaceTime interviews, uh, walking through the vehicles themselves, uh, the VIN numbers. We should be doing our own, you know, uh, uh, Carfax history report, stuff like that. And we should be asking a lot of questions. Or risk being one unhappy camper. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Maryland's clever writing. 448 on your Wednesday morning. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And folks, I wish I had better news. However, we have a situation uh, that has closed all the northbound main lanes right now here in the downtown area. So uh, folks that used to take a northbound 35, uh, as you're approaching uh, Highway 90, you're going to notice severe backups. Uh, you are not going to be able to make it even to Laredo Street. And that's because we have this 18-wheeler uh, blocking all the lanes. Kind of hard to make out, so put your coffee cup down. Uh, pay attention right here. This uh, tractor trailer blocking all the northbound 35 main lanes. So that's going to be right before that Laredo exit. So that's going to cause some significant issues out there. Uh, we already have quite a bit of backup. Take a look. That's 35 at Novelitos, as you can see. Still have some folks that are unaware of what's going on and trying to use that entrance ramp there. So hopefully we'll be able to get some assistance out there, get those vehicles off the roadway back behind here. Everyone's being forced off the highway. Uh, I'm baffled, Marcus. Uh, it's going to be a mess. I, I thought that was a straight stretch right there. Do we it's, have any idea what the heck happened? No, it's okay. going and it's going to be a mess. We have to get uh, at least one, possibly two King Kong wreckers up there, get that vehicle back up on the wheels and then open up the main lanes couple hours. Yeah, I was going to say, like fair to say, this is a couple hour ordeal, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? A couple and, hours. 
And the thing couldn't have fell in a more perfect way as far as to block every single lane. Right. I mean, it's every, just going from, from wall right. to wall, basically. It's, it looks like it's even covering the uh, breakdown lanes on either side. Wow, unbelievable. All right, thanks, Marcus. We know you're going to keep up updated all morning right here on GMSA. All right, well, let's talk about rain chances. That's encouraging. Yeah, it, it is very encouraging. Now, of course, we were talking about the chance for some rain last night, and I'm going to show you the satellite picture in just a minute. It was like, oh, come on down here. But all is not lost by any stretch. Beautiful moon today is, of course, the, uh, the full moon, and it is the full corn moon, as it's called in legend. This is not the, the uh, harvest moon, though. The harvest moon is the one closest, the full moon closest to the uh, autumnal equinox, and that's going to be on October the 1st. So uh, even though a lot, of, obviously, most of the time the harvest moon is in September, this one is not that. All right, the, you can just see the humidity once again out there. Get ready. That's the one thing. Uh, even though we're not going to be seeing triple digit temperatures, it's still going to be pretty darn hot out there. Nineties and a lot of humidity, but at least I think we're done with the triple digits for a while. So here's the uh, system up to the north and yeah, it looked very encouraging and then it just kind of hit Austin almost and then started working its way off to the uh, east of us. However, we do have some more of these showers off to the west, a couple of disturbances out there and those are going to continue to throw some energy in our direction. As you can see, there are a few showers around, so one or two uh, showers scattered about the area and then a better chance of rain later on today because we also have some other disturbances that are kind of working their way into the area. So here's one computer model. I think it does a pretty good job. A lot of times this thing tends to broad brush as far as uh, rain chances, but this again is doing very well. It's initializing with that system up there and the one over there in the uh, on the mountains of Mexico, and we'll see a couple of scattered showers around this morning, maybe a little lull in the action, and then refiring later on uh, this afternoon, late afternoon in toward dinner time, and then going into the evening hours, there's still a chance once again for one of those nighttime little storm complexes uh, with the 25 cent name to develop here and throw some more thunderstorms in our direction into tomorrow morning, and we'll still have some scattered rain around even in through the day tomorrow, and then I think rain chances pick back up again then on Friday, and the reason for it is there's the two areas of rain right now, but also see that little curly cue up there right on the panhandle. That's another low, which is going to be working its way across here, and that's going to keep kind of the atmosphere churned up, if you will, to keep some rain chances around here with the cloud cover. That's going to help to keep temperatures down somewhat. But again, it's I mean, it's still going to be really steam bath out there, but at least some of that steam bath is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. 88 for high temperature, excuse me, for noon temperature. Wish that was the high uh, 97 for a high temperature today. Scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms. And if one of those uh, thunderstorms pops up, could have, you know, some nice downdraft winds. And also, uh, by the way, no heat advisories today. So that's one good thing. But we will still obviously have those strong, those high temperatures up there and heat index uh, readings to deal with. Uh, what I was going to say is with some of those thunderstorms, could have some hefty downpours in places. Now, even though the ground is very dry, it's probably just going to soak it up like a sponge. Still got to watch out for some of those hefty downpours. And we keep rain chances in through the weekend and temperatures still in the 90s through the weekend. For us, that's a cold snap. Yeah, that's great news all yeah. around. We yeah. love it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 453, 82 degrees. And coming up next, a look at how AMC theaters will be honoring Chadwick Bozeman after he passed away from colon cancer. A hit movie starring Chadwick Boseman making its way back into AMC theaters across the nation. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. In my heart. AMC honoring Chadwick Boseman, putting 42 back in theaters, in which Boseman played barrier-busting baseball star Jackie Robinson. The 2013 film put Boseman on the map as the go-to guy to play inspirational, historical black men. Roles as James Brown and Thurgood Marshall soon followed. Bozeman died last week from colon cancer. Tickets for 42 will cost just five bucks. Yeah, I'm a it's lucky number seven for Miranda Lambert. The Bluebird singer picked up seven nominations at the 2020 CMA Awards and set a record in the process. With a total of 55 nods, she's now the most nominated female act in the history of the show. She's had Breaking the record previously held by Reba McIntyre's 51 nods. To get a little Lambert and Carrie Underwood are both nominated for the coveted Entertainer of the Year Award. The first time in 10 years, two women have been nominated in the category. Darling, you look perfect tonight. Ed 
Sheeran has a new dance partner, he and wife Sherry, announcing on Instagram that they're now proud parents of a baby girl named Lyra. It's the first child for both. And on the heels of the new Bill and Ted movie coming out, star Keanu Reeves has a birthday today. He's 56, while actress Salma Hayek is 54. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Ton of entertainment news in that one. I know, a lot of birthdays too. About three till right now, 82 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Donald Trump pledging to help rebuild Kenosha, Wisconsin after people destroyed parts of the city following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. And still ahead, a look at how Apple and Google's contact tracing IS is getting deeper integration into iOS and Android. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a man recovering after a shooting overnight on the northwest side. We have details just ahead. Plus, President Donald Trump visits Kenosha, Wisconsin, and pledges his support to help the town recover. And back here at home, a change to the pattern, increased weather uh, chances, rather, for rain around here. Hopefully, it's not just a weather change. We'll break this pattern. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is September 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, I'd like to break the pattern as well. Yeah, radar this morning still showing a few scattered showers and thunderstorms in different parts of the state. Yeah, not as close to all of us as we'd like right now. The one pattern, unfortunately, that's not going to change for the next few days is the humidity. It is, I mean, still a steam bath out there, but at least with all that moisture in the atmosphere, a lot of it in places is going to get squeezed out for some, some rain. So that's the encouraging thing. We're at 79 right now. Still a couple of 80s out there around uh, Hondo and Uvalde and dew points remain in the mid 70s all around the area, which means it again is a steam bath like it has been the past couple of days. Aquifer took a big hit yesterday. Obviously, the 10 day average is still well below 660 and allergens. Everything is light across the board. All right, as far as rain now, it was encouraging looking last night, but you look up way up at the top of your screen and that area just decided to kind of put on the brakes when it got in when it saw sight of our vicinity and and is moving off to the almost to the east to northeast. However, we've got more of these showers out here and another disturbance over in the mountains of Mexico, and that's throwing some energy in our direction. We do have a couple of light little showers that are being uh, picked up on radar right now. So a couple of showers around the area this morning, and there's still some other disturbances around here, which with the afternoon heating will spawn some more showers and some more thunderstorms around here. Uh, again, these dew points remain well up into the mid to upper 70s, but again, in this case, at least they're going to get squeezed out to or squeeze out some rain from that. So scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms might have actually a few hefty downpours if you get one of these thunderstorms around here and about a 50% chance for rain today, 97 for a high temperature. Nicest number I've written in a long time. It does not have three digits to it. And then uh, tonight we will have a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Might actually have another one of these nighttime storm complexes trying to de develop. And then tomorrow through the weekend, we keep some rain chances around here and temperatures are going to continue to kind of ease mid and lower 90s in through the weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo and you got big news, right? Big problems on northbound 35. So folks from the south side, you normally make your way in or through the downtown area. Uh, you're going to want to choose another route. Now you could make it to I-10, Highway 90. Uh, best bet is take I-10 uh, going back east so you can make it up to 37 because right now all the northbound main lanes at 35 are shut down before you get to Laredo Street. Now here's uh, the accident itself on Transguy. We have quite a bit of backup. The 35 and Nogalitos camera can show you that and folks are actually being rerouted. They're having to, officers are having to back cars up one by one, feed them off onto the exit ramp and then they're able to use this entrance ramp here to bypass that accident. But here is that 18 wheeler sitting all across the main lanes of northbound 35. Now we actually have Katrina Weber live out there at the scene of this accident. Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, this is almost one of those stories where you let the pictures uh, tell the story because that's what we have here is pictures. Uh, you mentioned the rerouting. That's what's going on right where we are. You can see uh, cars going up on the ramp here. This is where they are coming off the highway and then be being directed around the crash. The site is right up at the top of this 
bridge right there over San Pedro Creek. Uh, there is an 18 wheeler on its side. We can see the bottom portion of that. Now I've heard that that 18 wheeler may be carrying some ceramic tiles. I asked some of the officers here on the ground if they knew if any of that load had spilled out on the highway. They weren't able to tell me that. We obviously cannot get up there to see for ourselves, but we can see that there is a lot of traffic backing up here uh, right now. No sign of any tow truck in sight. So for now, this uh, remains a situation where people are just behind that wreck, sitting in their vehicles, waiting for it to clear and waiting for it to move. And then again, the traffic that the police are able to move is being routed right past that, right in front of that. And that's what you see as far as these cars going up on the ramp. As far as we know, no one was injured. We did hear police say that uh, the driver had gotten out on his own. So it doesn't look like this, is, this uh, involves any injuries, but definitely some headaches for other drivers. Reporting live south of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a shooting that landed one person in the hospital overnight. Happened in the 6800 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police say two men were arguing at a Best Western in the parking lot when one shot the other in the knee. SAPD says the shooting suspect got away in a vehicle with a woman. The victim was taken to a hospital in stable condition. No word yet on any arrests. Felony assault charges against an African-American jogger mistaken for a family violence suspect have now been dismissed. The move came from District Attorney Joe Gonzalez after San Antonio police released nearly two hours of body camera footage of that arrest yesterday. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to give us a recap of those events. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. I know there was a lot going on yesterday with all the different updates, so let's get right to it. 33-year-old Matthias Ometu was taken into custody one week ago, then Jay jailed for two days after officers attempted to confirm whether he was a suspect in a nearby family violence case. He wasn't the suspect, and while detained, he refused to tell officers who he was, which legally he has the right to do so. Prosecutors yesterday dismissed felony assault charges against Ometu just hours after San Antonio police released nearly two hours of body camera footage of that encounter. The footage shows Ometu, who was stopped by police while jogging, repeatedly refused to give his name after being detained in connection to a family violence call. Officers later handcuffed him and physically forced him into the back of a patrol vehicle, later claiming he struck two of them with his foot. The officers later finding out Ometu, who has no criminal history, was not the man they were searching for. Chief William McManus said his officers acted appropriately, even though... They no longer want to pursue charges against Ametu. Ametu's attorney thanked DA Joe Gonzalez for dismissing the case, but called out the police department saying they falsely accused and unjustly arrested an innocent black man. We, will ha we have full video of that body cam video posted on KSAT.com right now. And later this morning, Ametu will be holding a press conference. Mark and Stephanie. President Trump witnessing the destruction in Kenosha, Wisconsin for himself. Businesses were burned, vandalized and looted during protests sparked by the police shooting of Jacob Blake. It's a case state investigators say they have now worked on for more than 600 hours. Nadia Romero has more from Kenosha. I'm committed to helping Kenosha rebuild. President Trump pledging to give $1 million to Kenosha law enforcement and vowing during his visit to Kenosha, Wisconsin Tuesday to help rebuild businesses destroyed during the protests there. I'm also providing nearly $4 million to support the small businesses that I talked about today that got burned up, burned down. And we're going to be providing over $42 million to support public safety statewide. Despite pleas from the governor and local officials to visit at a later time, the president came and his visit was met with opposition. Protesters on both sides clashing on the streets. Jacob Blake's friends and family slammed the president's visit as a campaign stunt. It is the same reason he visited Portland. He is here to sow chaos and fear. Jacob Blake should have been the primary purpose and the primary focus. That is what's causing this country to be in an uproar. President Trump did not meet with Jacob Blake nor his family during his visit, saying the family wanted lawyers involved. I didn't get to speak to the mother. I hear she's a fine woman. I've heard that from the pastor. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. Now 509, 79 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how Uber is making sure customers are wearing masks before riding to their destination. 
Holy turn right at the light, Batman. A first look at how Waze GPS app is making it so Batman can give you directions to your destination. That should be fun, getting directions from Batman. Yeah, if you can hear him, because typically doesn't Batman <laughs> talk like, I'm Batman. You have to turn it up to hear Batman. Yeah, turn right. <laughs> turn right now. Like taking a look out with live cam, and it's 79 degrees, it is humid, but we have promising news for Mike. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 512. In your morning consumer headlines, Walmart is expanding its breastfeeding pods. The retailer announced it is planning to install lactation suites in more than 100 stores this year. These pods offer freestanding spaces for women to breastfeed or pump. They are free to use and access through an app. Walmart says it's the first retailer to install them in a store setting. The company introduced the pods in three stores last year. An associate and new mom saw them while traveling and brought the idea back to Walmart. In your morning consumer headlines, if you're a fan of DC Comics and use the Waze app for GPS navigation, you want to know about this. In celebration of Batman Day coming up September 19th, you can now choose the voice of Batman or the Riddler to give you directions on your next adventure. The voices should be familiar ones. Waze and DC brought back Kevin Conroy to voice Batman and Wally Winger to voice the Riddler. Waze has also added the choices of the Batmobile or Riddler's Racer in place of your usual car icon. See, there they are. It's all for a limited time, though. All the fun ends coming up October 31st. That is fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> time now, 514 and 79 degrees for now. A warning for women. One woman wants you to get control of your financial future. Don't go broke. We have details next. And also next, a closer look at Walmart's new subscription service that aims to take one Amazon Prime? I think take on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. like the one big Amazon Prime? <laughs> in Princess Toast, but thanks to this USP seal, I know exactly what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummies verified by USP, a nonprofit organization that sets purity and potency standards. In today's Tech Bytes, Walmart is launching a membership service to challenge Amazon Prime. Walmart Plus will cost $98 a year or $12.95 a month. That's slightly cheaper than Amazon, but unlike Amazon, free shipping is not available on every item. It starts September 15th. Future versions of Google's and Apple's operating systems will include the company's COVID-19 notification system. Previously, users were required to install an app to use the Exposure Notifications Express. It's meant to easily notify users who opt in about possible virus exposures. And Uber wants proof you're wearing a mask. If you're not and your driver reports you, the rideshare company will now require a mask selfie the next time you use the app. The rule takes effect this month. Hey, it's another reason to take a selfie as well. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. You may have heard the statistic that women earn 80 cents to every dollar a man earns. That comes out to about $430,000 less over a lifetime. Women are also 80% more likely to be impoverished in retirement, according to some studies. Our Eric Ednadis talked to one woman who is sharing her financial plan. Nicole Hastings plays the role of mom and dad for her three kids. It wasn't really in the plan to marry someone with stage four lung cancer. First came the twins, Jack and Foster, but it was the youngest, Charlotte, that gave Phil a reason to live. He just wanted to see her be born. Phil passed away two weeks later, leaving Nicole with no savings, no insurance, and a residential window cleaning business she had no idea how to manage. I really did feel like I was in the dark. My mother uh, ended up with a $542 Social Security check, a mortgage, and no life insurance. Jeanette Bahalia dedicates her life to helping women create a life plan, not just a financial plan. 
facts. You've got to talk about the ugly realities of life. 80% of women die single, 80% of men die married. Women need to be some concerned with. How am I going to live? How do I keep from being a burden on my children? Her top tip? Know what you have and know where the money is. Figure out a monthly budget and pay yourself first, and then spend on children and parents, and never defer any financial decision making to anyone. I'm still dealing with millennials who are thinking that a man is a plan. Left with only a 1999 van to her name, Nicole gave up on the business and moved in with her parents. Today, she and the kids live on $1,600 a month. I do freelancing, I do DoorDash, I do Instacart, I clean houses, I work part-time at Starbucks. She tells other women to always be involved in all aspects of their financial life. Remember, it's never too early or too late to start planning for the future. Find yourself a like-minded advisor who speaks the financial language of women. Also improve your financial literacy. Take one financial concept a month and learn about it. Erica Hernandez, case at 12 News. Which is now tuning in. We got a big rig on its side covering all lanes of northbound 35. Yeah, big problems on northbound 35. A lot of headaches for drivers right now. It's not going to be pleasant if that's your normal route this morning. Now, a little bit of a uh, little bit of relief. The the bypass, if you will, uh, once you reach Highway 90, where it changes to Highway 90 to I-10 on northbound 35. Just uh, hang a right, go east till you hit 37, and then you can continue on north. If not, then you're probably going to be in a long line of traffic that's waiting to exit. Now, this is the actual accident scene here. We're going to back up a little bit, and as you can see, one by one, officers are getting those vehicles turned around to this exit ramp so they can then use the next entrance ramp available right up there. That's really not the line you want to be in. You want to just kind of use I-10, move over to 37, then continue on north for your morning commute. That 18-wheeler, probably going to be there for a few more hours. Those traffic officers have Yes, they've been they've been trying to clear that thing just as much as possible. Yeah. Mike? Thank you very much, sir. And obviously, uh, Marcus is going to keep us updated throughout the rest of the morning. All right. Some folks saw a sunrise in the past couple of mornings, but uh, not here. And I don't think we're going to be seeing one this morning. Got our morning uh, low clouds around all the humidity as well. And the one nice thing is 97 forecast for high temperature today because we are going to have uh, a lot more in the way of some clouds around here. We did hit 100 yesterday, despite the fact we had a lot of clouds. Uh, we just kind of crept right into it, but there are no triple digits on this map, so that's encouraging. I'm still going to be hot and steamy. I mean, we're still going to be seeing heat index readings uh, well above 100 today, so that part of the forecast is not changing, but at least we're kind of whittling away bits and pieces here and there. All right, this is what it looks like on radar, and this is just some kind of clutter around the radar site. You can always tell because it's not moving, but there's some of the showers, a couple of them in portions of the hill country, and we've got a nice cluster of showers and thunderstorms in the mountains of Mexico. This disturbance, which will continue to move on in here, that's going to throw some of these light showers out ahead of it. Don't be surprised if you see one or two of them this morning, and then later on this afternoon, we will start to see more. So we've got a some different features around and even though that system up there to the north of us kind of just put on the brakes and stayed up there to the north it has been throwing out some energy so that can help spark things later on today as well so we'll have uh, some showers, a couple of thunderstorms, about a 50% chance for some rain. So a decent shot at some rain. And if you do get one of these uh, thunderstorms, could have a pretty hefty downpour because of all this moisture in the atmosphere, kind of getting squeezed out like a sponge. And then we've got to watch out for another one of those nighttime storm complexes to move down through here. We'll have a few showers around tomorrow, maybe a little bit lesser chance during the day. And then rain chances are going to start to pick back up once we get into uh, Friday as well as Saturday. So we've got this low, which is kind of sitting in the vicinity, and that's going to help to keep things sort of churned up as we go in through tomorrow as well as on Friday. And then we're still going to get uh, some disturbances coming in here, being pushed on in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico as well. All right, forecast today, 88 at noon couple of showers around the area and then some scattered showers, a few thunderstorms later on today, maybe a couple of heftier downpours and some uh, around the thunderstorms, some blustery winds, 97 a high temperature. So at least thermometer is not going to be hitting triple digits. Of course, it will feel like that. And then with some cloud cover and some subtle changes, temperatures will kind of ease downward about mid 90s through the first part of the weekend. And we're looking at uh, even some low 90s by Tuesday.
Still looking good for the next week yep. or so. And some rain chances too. Awesome. All good news all the way around. Thank you, Mike. 524, 79 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at a brand new Jurassic World animated series that's coming soon to Netflix. The movie 42 starring Chadwick Boseman is coming back to theaters and more details on an animated Jurassic World series. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. They give me a number on my back. I'll give you the gut. The AMC movie theater chain is paying tribute to the late Chadwick Boseman by re-releasing one of his most popular films. The Jackie Robinson baseball biopic 42 will be shown in more than 300 locations starting this week. It will only cost you $5 to get in the game. You are the first kids in the entire world to ever experience the awesomeness that is Camp Cretaceous. An animated Jurassic World series arrives on Netflix this month. Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous follows a group of teenagers forced to band together to survive marauding dinosaurs. Steven Spielberg executive produced the eight episode series, which debuts September 18th. The home of the Grand Old Opry is open to audiences again after shutting down in March due to the pandemic. Nashville's Ryman Auditorium is kicking off its Live at the Ryman series this week with country crooner Scotty McCreary. Only 125 tickets will be sold, though, about 5% of the venue's capacity. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Now 528, 79 degrees. And still ahead, how officials are reacting now that more than 25,000 COVID cases in 37 states have been reported at colleges and universities. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, September 2nd, and it's always big news when part of an interstate is shut down here in the San Antonio metro area. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo about that northbound 35. That's right, Mark and Stephanie, all main lanes of northbound 35 completely shut down by that overturned 18 wheeler. Uh, the traffic flow there is starting to show a little bit of sign of improvement, not because the accident has been cleared, but rather because all those vehicles that were stuck behind that 18 wheeler, little by little, are being funneled off one at a time. There you see another uh, 18 wheeler that was not involved in the accident being turned around to exit the highway and then re enter. But we do have Katrina Weber live at the scene with another perspective of this accident in the clearing stages. Well, good morning. You're absolutely right. We can see uh, less traffic for sure behind that wreck site, uh, but the highway is still closed. We're just north of the Nogalitos exit. That's where this is up on the bridge over San Pedro Creek. Uh, there's an 18 wheeler on its side. Now uh, we have seen another small uh, sign of improvement. There's a King Kong wrecker up there, which is a sign that maybe uh, uh, pretty soon that this could be towed away. We have seen workers up there. They appear to be trying to clean up something on the highway, perhaps some chemical or some fuel that has spilled on the on the main lanes there. It doesn't look like anything came out of that 18 wheeler. We have heard that there were ceramic tiles, uh, a load of ceramic tiles in the back of that. Haven't confirmed that, but that's what, it, what we heard police saying. Uh, but it doesn't look like any of that load has spilled out. But again, a, a headache for drivers who are trying to travel north on 35 here, just uh, south of the downtown area, because this is shut down until they get that cleared up. As far as we know, there were no injuries uh, in this accident. We have heard that the driver was able to get out safely without any injuries. Reporting live south of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Of course, Katrina and Marcus are going to keep us updated on that uh, throughout the rest of Good Morning San Antonio. All right, same start this morning. However, we are starting to see some changes in the overall weather pattern. Now, we did hit 100 officially yesterday. Uh, yeah, there were some not quite as widespread as what we'd seen previous couple of days, and we're not going to be seeing as many triple digits today. Thank goodness. Most everybody will be staying just in the upper night. Now, still a ton of humidity out there, but it is going to be trending downward as far as temperatures. All right, we had a big storm complex up to the north. We might as well not even talk about that, although it has thrown out some energy, which is going to help to fire up more showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. But we've got this cluster of rain and some thunderstorms coming across the mountains of Mexico. And as you can see, it's throwing out some uh, some little bits of energy. And notice how this loops back on through here as this loops through how some of these showers have started to kind of grow a little bit and a few more are popping up. So 
so we will see a couple of showers around this morning. And then, like I said, we will have more later on this afternoon. So scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms and 97 for high temperature today, which is still above normal by about three degrees, but it's not triple digits, although it will feel like it because we still have a ton of humidity out there. That unfortunately is not really going to be going away too awfully much in the next couple of days. But at least the good news is some of that humidity is going to get squeezed out, which means could have a couple of hefty downpours out there today. That is a possibility. We will have uh, some showers and thunderstorms around tonight and maybe uh, a couple of those nighttime storm complexes trying to develop into the overnight hours. Some rain around tomorrow, but I think rain chances pick back up somewhat Friday and early on Saturday and temperatures will start to trend downward or continue to trend downward mid and lower 90s in through the weekend. All the details for the long Labor Day weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. More than 25,000 COVID cases reported at colleges and universities here in the U.S. Those cases span 37 states. CNN's Melissa Rainey reports on what precautions college administrators are taking to prevent the continued spread of the virus. As some students attempt to return to campus, colleges and universities in 37 states have been hit by coronavirus. More than 25,000 cases and counting. At the University of Missouri, more than 420 students have active cases. Officials at Utah State University say they've discovered evidence of the virus in a different way, in wastewater samples collected from four residence halls on campus prompting mandatory testing and quarantine for students living there. University leaders in Illinois say they are working to stay ahead of the virus, testing everyone on campus often. We're testing uh, every week, uh, twice a week, everybody, faculty, staff, students. So and we're catching a lot of asymptomatic carriers, just as Dr. Burke said, in that, in that age range. So we put them in what I like to think of as comfortable isolation, immediately working with the public health authorities where they can continue their studies and they have food and they have all the medical attention on a daily basis. And anybody who's been exposed by that carrier also gets a notification and they go into quarantine and we have housing set aside for all of that. After a two week delay, the University of Minnesota will reopen campus dormitories on two campuses over the next two weeks. However, Twin Cities students will face restrictions for the first several days and only be able to leave their dorm rooms to go to classes, eat, work or be outdoors. The university's president warning it will be far from the typical college experience. I don't think I could be anything but honest with you to say that that first period um, is not going to be much fun. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. A new White House medical advisor is reportedly suggesting the more people who get COVID, the more immunity there will be. But the idea of herd immunity is causing concern for the chair of the UTSA Department of Mathematics. Dr. Juan Gutierrez develops infectious disease models. Dr. Gutierrez says more COVID-19 cases would mean a high human cost of life with thousands dying. That solution is absolutely unacceptable, is misguided, is rooted in a misconception and misperception of what the disease is. Instead, Dr. Gutierrez says the idea of herd immunity must involve a vaccine. Dr. Gutierrez says hospitals would also be overwhelmed like they were in July. But now two powerful storms are barreling towards South Korea. One typhoon has already swept through Japan, hitting the island of Okinawa, bringing heavy rain and winds of up at 120 miles per hour. It's expected to hit South Korea later today. Tropical storm Haishen is not far behind. It's expected to strengthen to a typhoon before making landfall on Sunday. And Tyler Perry has joined an elite group that includes Oprah Winfrey, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg. Forbes magazine reports that the filmmaker is officially worth $1 billion. The newly minted billionaire owns the rights to all 22 of his movies, which has grossed nearly a $1 billion to date. Congratulations, Mr. Perry. Yeah, congrats. Great news. 538, 79 degrees. And still ahead, a local gastroenterologist has an important message when it comes to recognizing the first signs of colon cancer. And outside with live cam increased rain chances and that could have all sorts of side benefits for South Texas. Mike Osterhage has your local forecast coming. A friendly warning, some images in this story may be tough for some viewers to watch. A 38 year old mother of four fighting stage four colon cancer, urging others to look for early signs in their bodies. Gloria Rioja says doctors just missed it as a stomach virus or other issues. 
I actually was dealing with a lot of stomach um, issues, um, a lot of bloating, constipation. She says she wishes she would have been more aggressive to demand a scan. She has been fighting it for four years. She is the first person in her family to have any cancer diagnosis. Doctors say colon cancer is not always linked to family history. Obesity, diet, and smoking can play a role. African Americans are also at higher risk and most often diagnosed at a later stage, but everyone should look for signs of trouble in their body. If someone were to have rectal bleeding or a major change in their bowel pattern or an abdominal pain that's unexplained, uh, maybe a, a chronic diarrhea um, or symptoms of anemia, those would all be reasons that would justify looking in someone sooner than the age of 45. And doctors say they have found colon growth in teens. If not removed, those polyps can grow into cancer. To find out more, you can go to our website at CASA.com. And time now is 542 and 79 degrees for now. Next, the incredible story of a baby born at one pound, nine ounces, finally getting to go home. 5.45 on your Wednesday morning. Now to a story about a family that can finally rest easy after their newborn faced some pretty tough odds. Here's ABC's Tom Yamas. This is little Michaela Petty. Now six months old, Michaela was born 16 weeks premature in the parking lot of St. Joseph Hospital on Long Island, weighing just one pound, nine ounces. She was declared what's called a micro preemie. Dr. John Matthew rushed Michaela inside the hospital telling mom Maria he would fight for her daughter. But there was a problem. The hospital didn't have a NICU. So Dr. Matthew had the difficult, grueling task of keeping Michaela breathing for 90 minutes without damaging her fragile lungs. Michaela was eventually transferred to a NICU at a neighboring hospital and put on life support. After so many sleepless nights of waiting, this is the moment mom got to hold Michaela for the first time, 10 days after she was born. Michaela would spend her first 122 days in the NICU before mom and dad finally got to take her home. Michaela, now nine pounds, here she is with her big brother Nicholas. Her family never forgetting what that team did for them. It wasn't until Michaela was stable enough that the neonatologist sat down and talked to us and explained how what Dr. Matthew did that day is something that they would have never even done themselves. And the fact that he was able to do it and she not have any long-term effects from it they were astonished by it. The Petties wanted to bring Michaela back to the team who helped save her, reuniting her with that doctor who carried her into the hospital and made the promise. Dr. Matthew telling us he may have saved Michaela's life, but she also gave his team something in return. In the midst of all of this, to find out that this child, this little miracle baby was uh, doing well, um, and then to find out that they were coming to visit us, it was actually very joyous uh, for the whole staff. That was ABC's Tom Yamas reporting. And glad Michaela's okay. Let's check traffic right now, get you updated on the situation southwest of downtown. Marcus? Well, we're still looking at this uh, same area here. All northbound main lanes of 35 shut down before you even reach Laredo Street due to that 18-wheeler uh, accident that uh, parked across all the lanes there, laying on its side. So that's not a good situation. As you can see here, southbound traffic along 35, starting to build a little bit, but we still have that 18-wheeler cross. And as Katrina Wimmer reported earlier, we do have at least one King Kong wrecker on the scene. So hopefully we'll start to see a little bit of improvement there. Thank you, Marcus. Some pets up for adoption with great names. Let's see, we got Mariah, Mariah. Cannoli, and Ruby. Wait to see the pictures too. All yeah. right. Okay, can't wait. Gotta tell you Aww. about Ruby. Oh. <laughs> Is it too soon to put out the Halloween decorations? No, no, no not, not for not for this girl. Humane <laughs> society. Uh, they hate the Mariah, two-year-old retriever mix, and I, I don't know which pictures match up to which dogs, but just apply everything that they're all sweet and lovable. Uh, she's a super sporty and loves to be outdoors, go for long walks, gets along with other dogs, has been in several play groups as well. Well, and she shines there. Two year old pup, uh, Cannoli. He's a big boy, young, lots of puppy energy, gets along with other dogs, fast learner, already knows how to sit very well. And Ruby's four year old retriever mix and is one of the longest residents at the Humane Society. Loves to get all the attention, thrive in a home with cats, or excuse me, in a home with no cats and is the only dog because she wants all the attention. Hey, <laughs> who doesn't? For more information, please visit sahumane.org, course 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226 7461.
Look at your faces. Yes. Wake up in the morning and get a face full of dog like that. Nothing better. Hey, beautiful view. Yes, long hot days, but beautiful. And yes, it is. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. It's humid this morning. Now, humidity is really not going to be going away soon enough for a lot of us. Uh, right now, it feels like 83 degrees. Heat index is 91 Pleasanton. Gonzales, 90 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. And the afternoon dew point temperatures have been staying well up in the upper 60s and even some low 70s. That's going to be the case in through the weekend, so we will still have some pretty steamy afternoons, but at least the high temperatures will be dropping down somewhat, so we're not going to have quite as extreme uh, heat index readings that we had like a couple of days ago. All right, radar is looking kind of promising. This is just some clutter on the radar site. Got some pretty good showers and thunderstorms, obviously, working their way across the mountains of Mexico and throwing some... Uh, some rain and some energy into our area, into the hill country. And what's nice is just in the past, what, 15, 20 minutes, I mean, these things were almost nothing, and now they're really starting to grow out here. Some moving just past Lakey into a western Bandera County, sliding up basically to the kind of east, northeastwardly, and we will see more of these showers, even a couple of them. And notice how, again, they're growing, just kind of sprouting up very quickly. This one heading just to the north of a Pleasanton, kind of sliding up to the north. So more of these showers, we'll see a few of them throughout the morning, and then more are going to be firing up later on this afternoon because, like, for instance, the complex well up to the north of us right now, at least it's throwing some energy down in our direction. So that's going to help get things sort of fired up. That'll be the situation throughout the day into tonight. Maybe a couple of those nighttime storm complexes and then a few more scattered showers around the area tomorrow. And that's going to continue on into Thursday as well with some of those rain chances and then also into Friday. And really every day throughout the forecast, we have rain chances of varying degrees. Pretty good chance today, about a 50% chance for some showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here. 88 degrees today at noon. We're going to be up to 97 for a high, still above normal. It'll still feel like the low hundreds, but we're not going to, the thermometer's not going to be hitting 100. Scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Hefty downpours can't be ruled out because we've got so much moisture in the atmosphere. And, you know, think about a full sponge, you squeeze it, and all that water comes out. A little bit lesser chance for some rain uh, today, about a 40, or tomorrow, pardon me, about a 40, like I said, 50% chance for rain today. And I think rain chances will start to go up somewhat Friday and at least the first part of the day on Saturday. And again, still even a few rain chances Monday, Tuesday, 92. That's not a misprint. Hopefully those showers out there west of here this morning will continue tracking towards San Antonio. It's looking very promising and the way they're also sprouting up very quickly mm -hmm. too. Fantastic. Yeah, good news for all of our crunchy lawns. Yes, we do have crunchy lawns. What lawn? 552, 79 degrees. And one of the most highly anticipated summer blockbusters heading to North American theaters this week. Up next, we're going to get a first look at Christopher Nolan's Tenet. All I have for you is a word. After multiple release delays caused by the pandemic, Christopher Nolan's espionage meets time manipulation thriller Tenet is finally arriving in theaters. Use it carefully. John David Washington stars as a CIA agent known only by the designation The Protagonist. Time travel. No. Inversion. Name it and pull the trigger. You're not shooting the bullet, you're catching it. Washington called on his football career to prepare for a role where the laws of physics don't seem to apply. I was confident, um, very confident in my physical abilities due to my history, but that's with the understanding of how physics work, you know. Now we're kind of flipping it on its head. Everything I thought I knew, I have to learn the opposite, it made it very challenging. So there was about two months of training and preparation um, to get in my body the rules of inversion and the, uh, the theme of tenant. Industry watcher Comscore says only about half of North American theaters are open with diminished capacity. Tenet is the big ticket. That's the movie that everyone's been waiting for that's been talked about all summer long. It's already opened internationally ahead of its North American debut, and it earned around $54 million at the international box office, which is a huge number. So that portends, I think, good things to come 
in terms of its box office in North America. Well, I've seen too much. Well, we'll try and keep up. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Early reviews are pretty good. We're coming up today on GMSA at 9. Katie Science Lab is back this week. Katie is teaching us how to make our own volcano. To follow along, you'll need baking soda, food coloring, dish soap, vinegar, and a container and a makeshift volcano you can make from clay or Play-Doh. Make sure you tune in to Katie Science Lab at 9 today after Good Morning America. Well, you are watching GMSA. Still ahead in our next hour. It's been 26 years since the body of a 17-year-old girl was found in Frio County. We have a closer look at this murder case that has never been solved. And Transguide, the big news this morning, of course, is the shutdown of northbound 35 at Laredo due to a big rig on its side. We've had big backups this morning. SAPD is doing a great job of rerouting traffic. We'll get an update from Officer Marcus Trujillo. Police are looking for a gunman and getaway driver after a shooting outside a San Antonio hotel. Meanwhile, the victim in the hospital recovering from a gunshot wound. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's a humid 78 degrees, but we are excited about these rain chances and maybe slightly cooler temperatures throughout the week. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Wednesday, September 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning, but we've been pretty busy. Well, actually, it's actually Officer Marcus Trujillo has been busy with that big rig on its side on 35. Rollover or a big rig slipping on their side is is not unusual. The fact that it's covering so many lanes kind of is, Marcus. All the main lanes of northbound 35, Mark, and that's right before the upper and lower level split. So that's what makes it more difficult uh, getting traffic around there. Now, some folks are heeding the warning and they're taking uh, eastbound I-10 and over to 37 to continue north. And other folks are simply uh, taking the Nogalitos exit going uh, through that intersection there. And then there's an entrance ramp to continue on back north once again. But we do still have that 18 wheeler there blocking all the lanes. So we do have a King Kong wrecker out there. So hopefully We'll get something uh, up and moving, but uh, like I said earlier, probably be here till seven o'clock. And then, of course, a lot of times, with at least it's not raining. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, you got the humidity to deal with all those folks out there, but a lot of times, then they have to unload the the trailer sometimes. Sometimes, no word is. on yet of whether this really is fully loaded or it's not fully loaded, and whether or not they're going to have to transfer the cargo. Okay. All right. Well, of course, Marcus is going to keep us updated. And like I mentioned, it's still uh, very humid out there. We've got that haze. You know, we're not seeing those crisp, clear, distinct lights of downtown and uh, heat index readings right now. 90 New Braunfels, 91 Pleasanton, 81 here in town. Temperatures are, as you can see, 78 degrees down there in the corner of your screen. The nice thing is we've got rain on radar. A lot of big thunderstorms up to the north, and I only point that out those up there because it's throwing some little bit of energy down in our direction, which is going to help us later on today. But we've got that big cluster on the mountains of Mexico, and that's throwing a lot of energy in here. And these showers, I mean, again, loop back through this and watch as this loops over the past couple of hours. There was hardly anything out there, and it's really starting to grow, covering a good chunk of Real County. Now Bandera heading in toward uh, Kerrville. Some of that rain, if you're going out I-10, you're going to run into a little bit of that rain. And then we also have this one cell, and again, it was nothing just a little bit ago, and now it's popping up there right uh, heading in toward Pleasanton. And with that little red dot, you're seeing a couple of decent downpours. And so that's one thing we're going to have to watch out for. There is the potential for some heavy downpours localized with some of these showers and thunderstorms. So temperatures will be about where they are right now. Same thing we've been dealing with the past couple of mornings. Steady in the upper 70s, about the 5, 6 degrees above, above normal. And then 88 at noon today and a high temperature today. No triple digits. It'll feel like it, though, but we'll be up to 97 degrees. Some rain chances for the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that in a closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, police looking for two people involved in a shooting at a Best Western. It happened around 11 last night at the hotel off Loop 410 Alamo Downs Parkway in the west side. They say two men were arguing in the parking lot when one pulled out a gun and shot the other in the knee. Shooter got off away in a car and drove off with a woman. The victim was taken to a hospital where he is in stable condition. The shooter is still at large. 
Castle Hills police are also questioning a driver and a passenger after someone fired shots out of a car window earlier this morning. Police say it happened around 215 near West Avenue and Adobe. An officer was driving behind a pickup truck when he saw a passenger fire a gun out the window. That officer pulling over the driver and questioning both people in the car. The officer says both passengers were intoxicated. No charges have been filed at this time. Police say this man is facing aggravated assault charges for a shooting on the west side. An affidavit says 22 year old Davian Laredo shot at a family in a car during a drug deal on August 18th. Victim says Laredo shot at the car as he drove up to a house in the 900 block of Arbor Street, firing several shots and hitting his passenger. Driver says he knew Laredo because he had bought marijuana off of him before, was able to identify him for police. Nobody in the car suffered life-threatening injuries, although the passenger was treated at a hospital because a bullet grazed her head. Local health officials are reporting 222 cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, showing a gradual increase over the past few days. Mayor Ron Nirenberg announced last night that the seven-day average is now at 168 cases per day. 13 more deaths were reported yesterday, which occurred between June 26th and August 28th. The positivity rate in San Antonio is at about 8% and the school risk level is at moderate. San Antonio ISD has pushed back fall sports due to the pandemic. Workouts were supposed to begin coming up on September 8th, but they've now been shifted to October 5th. The district also hopes to start playing games by October 29th. That's according to a notification sent out by SAISD's athletic director, Todd Howie, to parents. The district has its own metrics to determine player safety which is more strict than Metro Health's guidelines. In a statement, the athletic director said, quote, the October 5th start date will still allow us to crown a district champion in football, volleyball, cross country, tennis, and participate in the UIL state playoffs at the varsity level. In addition, competitive sub-varsity schedules have been modified to ensure participation at all levels, end quote. Employees at a business in New Braunfels honoring Comal County Sheriff's Deputy Eddie Luna. Wood Cycle Country plans to name Saturday, September 5th, as Luna Day in honor of the deputy who was shot last month while serving a warrant. Mark Sheffield with the company says Luna served as a security guard for them for 14 years. He says Luna is known for his smile and joyful personality, and the incident has it hit everyone there. He's still going to be a you know, a pillar of the community. Um, he's a good guy. He's got a great attitude. And uh, losing losing a, a part of his arm and one of his hands uh, isn't gonna isn't gonna stop that from from being a reality. Mark Sheffield says they hope to raise at least ten thousand dollars to help Luna with recovery items such as a prosthetic arm and vehicle customization. If you'd like to help, you can go to our website at ksat.com. In some election headlines, Democratic nominee Joe Biden is expected to report nearly $300 million in donations for the month of August. Biden's campaign says that's only a preliminary amount, and they'll release the final figures in the coming days. $300 million would be a record-setting amount for one month of campaign donations. It passes what's believed to be the previous monthly record, then set by Senator Barack Obama in 2008. However, there are no formal record-keeping of donations. In a historic first, a member of the Kennedy family has lost an election in Massachusetts. Incumbent Ed Markey beat Representative Joe Kennedy in the state's Democratic Senate primary last night. Kennedy told supporters that he called Markey to concede the race. The 39-year-old representative is the grandson of former Attorney General Robert Kennedy, former President John Kennedy, and late Senator Ted Kennedy were his great uncles. 74-year-old Markey has been in Congress for more than four decades. Hurricane Laura made landfall last week near Lake Charles, Louisiana, and residents along that Category 4 hurricane's path are still cleaning up all that damage. This morning, the San Antonio Zoo is doing its part to help out a zoo in Louisiana that sustained significant damage from that hurricane. Sarah Costa is live at the zoo here before they head out to help with the cleanup in Alexandria. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and they have about 10 members that are getting ready to take off in just a little bit to Alexandria in Louisiana to help the facilities out there clean up. There's a lot of debris, down trees, animal exhibits that need help. And I'm joined by Adam Malstaff. You are the director of facilities here at the San Antonio Zoo. And you were saying this is just super important because you guys are all nonprofits. And when you're hit with a double threat like pandemic and hurricane, it's only, you know, the right thing to do to step in. 
Yes, ma'am, definitely. I think, uh, you know, we're all in here for conservation. I think we're all looking for the welfare of the animals and stuff like that. But we're definitely, in a time like this, I think it's very important that we as a community, you know, the zoos and aquariums just kind of stick together and help each other out as best we can with the resources that we have available. So you guys are, I see there's a bobcat behind us. I know um, some chainsaws are going down there. And what is the main goal? Uh, so predominantly right now, they've got a bunch of trees and stuff down. I think it was like 30 something trees that they've had down all throughout the whole facility. And so the goal right now is to get a lot of those trees out to get the debris out. Once the trees and the debris and stuff is out, I know there's a couple of exhibits that might need some repair and things like that. So, but I think predominantly we're looking to just clear out all that debris and stuff that's still down. And, you know, not only are you guys going to be helping clean out those animal exhibits, it's a very stressful situation. A lot of the staff at the Alexandria, Alexandria Zoo hasn't really left the zoo because they've been it's in an all-hands-on-deck situation. Uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, I've, they've all been there basically since day one. I mean, the hurricane came through, created a lot of damage, and they've all been there since. And then just other facilities have tried to help out as well. We've had uh, Baton Rouge just come in. I know Fort Worth went to... The Louisiana Purchase, uh, Snake Farm, Animal World was is there now also. So I think we're all just kind of trying to come there and try to provide as much needed relief that we could possibly give them. Okay, well, we'll let you get to it. I know you guys are trying to head out here. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate and best of luck in Alexandria. Thank you very much. Well, that team is going to head out again. Ten crew members from the San Antonio Zoo heading to Alexandria, Louisiana to help out their zoo after Hurricane Laura. And just stay with us and we'll bring you more on this story throughout the morning. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. 610, 78 degrees. And Walmart announcing that it's expanding its new breastfeeding pods in its stores. The details ahead. And a warning for women about getting control of your financial future. We have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, 78 degrees and humid for now. We're excited about the rain. Mike's going to join us later to talk all about it. We'll be right back. Nicole Hastings plays the role of mom and dad for her three kids. It wasn't really in the plan to marry someone with stage four lung cancer. First came the twins, Jack and Foster but it was the youngest, Charlotte, that gave Phil a reason to live. He just wanted to see her be born. Phil passed away two weeks later, leaving Nicole with no savings, no insurance, and a residential window cleaning business she had no idea how to manage. I really did feel like I was in the dark. My mother uh, ended up with a $542 Social Security check, a mortgage, and no life insurance. Jeanette Bahalia dedicates her life to helping women create a life plan, not just a financial plan. You've got to talk about the ugly realities of life. 80% of women die single, 80% of men die married. Women need to be some concerned with. How am I going to live? How do I keep from being a burden on my children? Her top tip? Know what you have and know where the money is. Figure out a monthly budget and pay yourself first, and then spend on children and parents, and never defer any financial decision making to anyone. I'm still dealing with millennials who are thinking that a man is a plan. Left with only a 1999 van to her name, Nicole gave up on the business and moved in with her parents. Today, she and the kids live on $1,600 a month. I do freelancing, I do DoorDash, I do Instacart, I clean houses, I work part-time at Starbucks. She tells other women to always be involved in all aspects of their financial life. Remember, it's never too early or too late to start planning for the future. Find yourself a like-minded advisor who speaks the financial language of women. Also improve your financial literacy. Take one financial concept a month and learn about it. Erica Adonis, KSAT 12 News. KSAT and our community partners once again partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank for Hunger Action Month in September. And this time, the call for help has increased drastically due to the pandemic. Every dollar you donate to the food bank helps provide seven meals. You can also donate some most wanted items. Some of those include peanut butter, beans, rice, and baby food. You can find out how to donate right now on KSAT Community. Signs of progress out there at northbound 35 in Laredo. Here's Marcus. And right now, as you can see from this trans guide shot, uh, they do have that uh, vehicle to the side 
just a little bit. So not quite yet to the point where we can completely remove it from the roadway. However, maybe, maybe there is that possibility. We may be able to open up uh, one lane in just a little while, but uh, we still have a number of emergency vehicles out there. And we also have to make sure that uh, those lanes that are opened uh, are free of any debris. That includes any debris, uh, ve uh, vehicle fluids that may have leaked from that accident. Thank you for the update, Marcus. Mike, call it wishful thinking. I brought my umbrella in from the car this morning. Just Very in case. Smart. Not a bad idea. Now, had you forgotten it, then that would have upped the rain chances. Oh, oh. forgot. Like, go okay. wash your car and well, that'll help you. <laughs> there's always tomorrow. Uh, yeah. but, you know, something that's not a bad idea to what? dust off your umbrella over the next mm -hmm. couple of days because radar is looking very nice this morning. Temperatures. It is it's pretty hot and steamy out there still upper 70s and we've got a few showers showing up on radar and then a couple of more showers and thunderstorms later on today. Even a couple of hefty downpours can't be ruled out and we will top off upper 90s no triple digits. Now it's still going to feel like it's in the triple digits though with all the uh, humidity. I love this picture. Today is the day of the full moon It is the full corn moon. This is not the harvest moon. That's going to be on the uh, 1st of October because that's the one that's closest to the autumnal equinox. Boy, that's a pretty picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And then you look at this picture and, you know, think back, what, a few days ago, a week ago, when we had drier air in the morning, two points are down in the 60s. You can see those lights a lot more clearly, and now it's back to that kind of hazy condition. Here's the beautiful picture, though. Look at the rain out in portions of the hill country. A lot of this energy is being thrown out here from those uh, showers uh, cluster over there in the mountains of Mexico. And again, a couple of hours ago, there was nothing out there. And this is almost filling into one kind of almost just one solid area of rain. And notice how also the colors are starting to change a little bit going from yellow into orange. So uh, some heftier downpours. And that's one thing we're gonna have to watch out for is some potentially heavy downpours. They'll be kind of localized, but even this one, for instance, right there, right around Pleasanton, notice that little red dot. So that's some fairly heavy rain. This is all sliding basically up to the north to northeast. And we continue to keep rain around throughout the day. This cluster of storms up there to the north of us, even though it's going to be staying up to the north, is throwing a little bit of energy in our direction. We've got the energy coming in here from the uh, cluster in the mountains of Mexico. And so all this is going to kind of combine to give us, along with the afternoon heating, more of these showers and thunderstorms around here. And then also we'll have to be on the lookout tonight for one of those perhaps nighttime storm complexes to uh, move on in here. Quick check of the tropics. We've got a couple of disturbances coming off the uh, coast of Africa and in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but it is that system there. And this one here, we have tropical storm Nana, and this is Omar. This one obviously close to us, but it's just going to work its way across Central America. So that's not going to be of any concern. Plus the other weather features up here are going to keep that away from us. There's the disturbance, which is kind of adding to the energy around here, keeping the atmosphere churned up, giving us the rain chances today. And we keep some rain chances around the next couple of days. Even though that low sort of disappears, we'll still have a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico, which is very encouraging. The high wants to dominate. Now watch what happens, and this is a good sign of kind of early little taste of fall and we've been talking about how computer models are still looking at a front to move on through here by the middle part of next week and things have stayed fairly consistent. So the high sort of retreats to the west and this trough digs down in here and that's going to be looks like late late Tuesday night into Wednesday and that should knock out some of the humidity shift the winds around to the north and bring in some temperatures down in the 80s by the middle of, of next week. Today, though, we still got to deal with all the humidity, but we have some showers to enjoy. I'm not going to say to deal with 88 degrees today at noon, but obviously later on this afternoon, especially watch it for some damp roads. 97 for a high temperature today with uh, scattered showers and a few thunderstorms. About a 40 50% chance of rain today, a little bit lesser chance tomorrow, and I think the rain chance will go up somewhat on uh, Friday, Saturday, tapering a little bit by Monday, Tuesday, and then we are going to see temperatures slow decline in through the weekend. So we could see 80s for highs latter part of next week, perhaps? Uh, perhaps by what it's looking like right now would be on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, so, Exciting. but <laughs> yeah, again, it's qualified. Week right. away, but the thing is, things have been very consistent up to now. So mm -hmm. we'll just have to keep hoping that it stays that consistency. So it's not written in stone yet. Amen. We can Thanks. hope.
621, 78 degrees. And researchers are questioning if face shields and masks with valves actually work. In today's GMA First Look, we're going to see the study on the two popular face coverings. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. How would I describe overpaying on a used car? It's humiliating. It's expensive. God. If you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on a used car again. Shop millions of great deals at the all-new Carfax.com. Mucinex cold and flu all in one fights. Oh no, 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 no. Sore throat, fever, cough, sinus pressure, chest congestion, sinus congestion, knees and body pain, all in one. Did you really need the caps lock? Mucinex cold and flu all in one. Hi, this is Margaret, your Dell Technologies advisor. To listen is to hear more than what's being said and offer the answers that make someone feel truly heard. I understand. Let's get started. Call a Dell Technologies advisor today. I'm 53, but in my mind, I'm still 35. That's why I take Osteo Biflex to keep me moving the way I was made to. It nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. Osteo Biflex plus vitamin D for immune support. In this morning's GMA First Look, they may be popular, but how well do face shields and masks with valves actually work? Three, two, one. New video showing just how ineffective a face shield can be when used alone to protect against the spread of coronavirus. It's part of a new study from Florida Atlantic University. Researchers using a water and glycerin mixture to simulate a cough or sneeze from a mannequin's mouth and nose. The larger droplets, they will get stopped. But the smaller droplets, they um, follow the airstreams very, very well. So they can basically flow around the visor very easily. Researchers also testing an N95 rated mask with an exhalation valve. During exhalation, the valve opens and there's free flow of air, which is not good. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, Walmart is expanding its breastfeeding pods. The retailer says it will install lactation suites in more than 100 stores this year. These pods offer freestanding spaces for women to breastfeed or pump. They are free to use and accessed through an app. Future versions of Google's and Apple's operating systems will include the company's COVID-19 notification system. Previously, users were required to install an app to use the Exposure Notifications Express. It's meant to easily notify users who opt in about possible virus exposures. Uber wants proof that you're wearing a mask. If you're not and your driver reports you, the rideshare company will now require a mask selfie. The next time you use the app, the rule takes effect this month. The FBI is getting involved after those reports that someone is flying in a jetpack above Los Angeles International Airport. Two American Airlines pilots say they saw him 30 yards from their aircraft on Sunday at an altitude of 3,000 feet. Air traffic controllers had to warn the pilots about that jetpack flyer. And time now is 627 and 78 degrees. A jogger arrested by SAPD holding a press conference later this morning. We'll have information in the next half hour. The nation's top doctors with a warning ahead of the holiday weekend. I'm Inez de Liquitera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with live cam, a blurry look at the <laughs> downtown San Antonio. Sun is trying to come up. We have some showers streaming our way. We are crossing our fingers that they will make it. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is September 2nd, and we welcome you to your midweek with uh, a rough start on the roads. I know. Unfortunately for drivers, I-35 northbound at Laredo has been pretty much a holdup. All the lanes blocked for most of the morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Marcus Trujillo. That's right. And it started very, very early. Uh, as we take a look at the transit camera here in just a minute, it looks like they're making progress. However, uh, we are getting closer to 7 o'clock, and it looks like we're going to reach 7 o'clock well before we reach that point where we open some additional lanes. As you can see, traffic is backing up, not quite all the way to military, but uh, it is starting to back up on those northbound main lanes of 35, just south of Highway 90. Traffic is being diverted. Now, best bet is to move over to 37. So if you can use 
I-10 going eastbound and then continue on 37. That would be your best bet because even though we've got a King Kong record there and they've moved the vehicle off to the side there, all lanes of northbound 35 are still blocked. So that's not the best path this morning. At least it's dry, Mike. Yes, it is. Uh, at least on the surface, it's dry, but the humidity, of course, yeah. is still is still there. So that's one thing we're going to have to continue to put up with. And the humidity, though, is in this case going to help feed some showers. And we do have some right now. Dew point temperatures remain mid upper 70s. That's really not going to be changing all that much over the next couple of days. But like I said, at least we've got some rain out there. And this is just a, a gorgeous picture looking at some of these showers out here in portions of the hill country. We've got uh, these uh, showers and thunderstorms which are coming off the mountains of Mexico. Those will be working their way across the river. And this is throwing out some energy. And again, there wasn't much of anything out there just a couple of uh, couple of hours ago and now covering a good chunk of Real County, uh, Bandera, as you can see, Bandera County and working its way up to basically the kind of east northeastwardly and then even down here around Atascosa County. We got this one little cell again that almost popped up out of nothing and that little reddish on there indicates you got a decent downpour and that's what we'll have to watch out for today are some fairly hefty downpours with some of these showers and thunderstorms because of course there is so much moisture in the atmosphere and it's just kind of getting squeezed out. So we've got humid conditions, a few showers this morning, showers, scattered thunderstorms later on today, about a 40 50% chance for rain today. So a decent shot at some rain and look at that 97 only 97. Other people are from out of town are going, what do you mean only 97? But no triple digit readings, although of course it will feel like it's still up into the hundreds because we will still have a fair amount of humidity around here. Showers and thunderstorms. Then tonight we're going to have to watch out for one of those nighttime storm complexes to perhaps move in from uh, the hill country and work its way down to the south. And then the next few days we keep rain chances in the forecast of varying degrees and temperatures are going to continue kind of a slow downward trend into the mid and even some lower nine. We'll take a look ahead to the long Labor Day weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephanie, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Late breaking news right now. Police on the scene of a shooting on the northeast side happening in the 5100 block of Village Crest. That's not far from I-35 and Ritterman Road. Our Katrina Weber is live with more information. Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, police are calling this an accidental shooting. The person who was shot, a 14-year-old boy, it happened in this home right here in the 5100 block of Village Crest. Police have been here since about 5 o'clock this morning. That's when they got the call. Now, they say what they've found out so far is it appears that the teenager was in the house with a friend. They were either handling or playing with a weapon. And uh, they believe at this point the teen who was shot may have been grabbing the gun or reaching for it. Uh, reached for it wrongly and it discharged shooting him in the chest. Uh, police are still in the very preliminary stages of their investigation though, so they say that's what it appears so far, but they are still investigating, still talking to people. The teen who was shot was rushed to the hospital. Uh, we are not able to comment at this point on his condition, but again, a full investigation going on here in this house. Police say that the two teens were in the house with another relative who was asleep and didn't realize that uh, the other person who was visiting, that other teenager who was visiting, ha was even at the house. So uh, at this point, it doesn't appear that any adults uh, knew what was going on. And they also say it doesn't look like the weapon came from this house, that perhaps it may have been stolen. But again, all of that preliminary as police begin this investigation here. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. One of the top stories we have been following, Matthias Ometu is expected to hold a press conference outside of the Bear County Courthouse today. San Antonio officers arrested Ometu while he was jogging back on August 25th. That press conference will take place on the day after the police department released body cam footage of the nearly two hour arrest. It also comes a day after Ometu's, Ometu's lawyer announced all charges filed against Ometu will be dropped. The press conference is scheduled for 10 this morning. You can read a full account of what happened right now on KSET.com. This morning, members of the San Antonio Zoo packing up supplies and preparing to head over to Louisiana. They will be helping members at the Alexandria Zoo, which was impacted by Hurricane Laura. Our Sarah Costa is live with more. Good morning. Good morning. And those 10 members that those 10 members from the San Antonio Zoo, they just left. They packed up a couple of trucks along with equipment. 
and they are making their way to the Alexandria, Louisiana Zoo that put out a call for help asking other zoos for assistance because they've received some major damage from Hurricane Laura. They have downed trees, they have damage to some of their exhibits. Now 10 members 10 members from the San Antonio Zoo will be doing their part to help out. They will join members from zoos in from New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and San Antonio's Animal World and Snake Farm with equipment like chainsaws, generators, and construction tools. They will help repair animal exhibits, clear the property of debris, but also providing much needed relief for Alexandria Zoo staff members who have been at the zoo working nonstop since that hurricane hit. Local businesses and organizations have donated materials to help out, like fuel cards from Valero Energy and United Rentals that has donated some construction equipment. Now, this is not the first time that San Antonio Zoo has helped out other zoos whenever they've been hit by a natural disaster. Back in 2017, members from the San Antonio Zoo went down to the Houston Downtown Aquarium to help them out clean up some of that damage back when Harvey hit in 2017. Reporting live outside of the San Antonio Zoo, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Ahead of the holiday weekend, Dr. Anthony Fauci warning state leaders about Labor Day gatherings running the nation's progress in the fight against COVID-19. Comes as the Midwest faces a new surge in cases with Ohio reporting its biggest jump in new infections since July. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has the latest. Good morning. President Trump facing fresh criticism from his 2020 opponent over his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. This morning, the nation's top doctors bracing for the holiday weekend. Following the Corpus Christi, following Memorial Day, when people understand that they get out and hug again, we've had surges. Dr. Anthony Fauci urging Americans not to let Labor Day activities ruin the progress made fighting COVID-19, especially with flu season around the corner. This as the president claims on Fox News that blue state governors are keeping their states closed so as to hurt him in the upcoming election. These states that are closed are run by Democrats, and the reason they're closed is because we have an election on November 3rd. With and the president not- facing skepticism among voters, the White House now considering launching a $250 million new public health campaign on the virus. This as Democratic nominee Joe Biden continues to blast the president's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, telling our station oh, there, WTVD. The American people are looking for responsible leadership on COVID. They. They've, they've shared sacrifice, missing weddings, funerals, family events. It's it. They should expect the same responsibility coming from their president or presidential candidate. Meanwhile, the debate over when and how to reopen schools continues. New York City schools now agreeing to randomly test students and staff each month. The federal government says they plan to ship 150 million rapid tests to states to be used in the reopening of schools. Inez de la Guterra, ABC News. Washington. In your other morning headlines, his casket of a Fort Hood soldier returned home to Boston, Massachusetts. 23 year old Sergeant Elder Fernandez's body found August 23rd after he was reported missing four days earlier. Fernandez, the third soldier to die at Fort Hood this year. The Army currently investigating allegations Fernandez was sexually assaulted on post. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says he hopes to reach a bipartisan coronavirus relief package. Mnuchin promised he would help negotiate a new deal with Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. However, the two cannot agree on a price tag right now. Speaker Pelosi says she will not go below a $2.2 trillion stimulus bill. Mnuchin pushing a $1 trillion plan. 640, 78 degrees. It's been 26 years since the body of a 17-year-old girl was found in Frio County. We're going to have a closer look at this murder case that has never been solved. That's after the break. 644, it's been 26 years since the body of 17-year-old Samantha Zublianis was found out in Frio County. This murder case has never been solved, and investigators still need your help. Our Eric Hernandez takes a back a look at this case in the latest South Texas crime story. Back in August 1994, Samantha Zublianis was starting her senior year at MacArthur High School. She lived on her own with other friends and had recently started working at Wendy's on Nacogdoches and Loop 410. August 30th would be the last time anybody saw Samantha alive. Just four days later, her body was found southwest of San Antonio in rural Frio County. 
The Texas Rangers led this investigation, but with little to no evidence, the case went cold. Investigators have not given up and still hope to solve Samantha's murder and put whoever responsible behind bars. A cash reward of up to $3,000 is available for information that leads to an arrest. Tomorrow would be the 26th anniversary of the day that Samantha's body was found. Now, if you have any information on this case, you're urged to call the Crime Stoppers hotline at 1-800-252-TIPS, or you could submit a tip online at the Texas Rangers Cold Case website. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Now, quarter to seven. Let's go ahead and check that accident there on I-35 northbound. Marcus, how's it looking now? Well... All the lanes still closed. Now, officers are making progress as well as the rest of the emergency crews out there trying to clear this accident. As you can see, very minimal traffic. Most folks are uh, taking Highway 90 or I-10 eastbound over to 37, then continuing on north. However, the tractor trailer there on its side hasn't been uprighted just yet. So no word yet on whether they have to unload it first uh, before they can remove it from the roadway. But as you can see, still no traffic on the northbound main lanes of 35. Thank you, Marcus. You see in the background there on that uh, right behind Marcus, a little bit of uh, some clearing right now. But see that? Yeah, I think that may be kind of limited today. We're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around, and then uh, we do have some uh, rain in the forecast. Another just spectacular picture from Woodlawn Lake. Thank you. Very yeah, right place at the right time with that and with that uh, swan swimming past. Great picture. Thank you for the KSAC Connect shot. And here we are seeing uh, you, all the hay. Well, obviously the shots a little out of focus, but the clouds along the, uh, the horizon there and all the humidity and then a little bit of clearing above that. But we also have some rain showing up and this is one of the prettiest pictures we've seen around here in a long time. Uh, the rain has really started to fill in in portions of the hill country, obviously coming off the uh, mountains of Mexico here. Even a few uh, thunderstorms, which are now just to the north of Eagle Pass. A couple of uh, decent downpours thrown in as well. This is some moderate rain and then right here just north uh, and east of Brackettville, a little bit of a, a heavier shower and that is one thing you really have to be on the lookout for some of those brief, very heavy downpours and this one, which should look promising there, going through Atascosa County, sort of rained itself out, but more of these showers are developing in behind it, and this is all sliding up to the north. So we will see a couple of scattered showers around throughout the day, which is what computer models are indicating. Through noon, a couple of uh, scattered showers here and there. Of course, it won't be raining constantly everywhere, but we've got about a 40, almost 50% chance for some rain today. We will have to be on the lookout for some of these nighttime storm complexes to uh, try and develop around here. And then tomorrow, I think a lesser chance for some rain throughout the day, but still we will have uh, some scattered rain around here, even going into tomorrow. And we've got not not only this cluster of uh, storms up here to the north of us, which never really moved down in our area, but it is going to hopefully throw some energy in our direction. This one coming in across the mountains of Mexico and then notice that little little curly cue right there, a little bit of a, a low, which is moving through the panhandle. That also is going to help kind of churn the atmosphere up a little bit in our vicinity to help with those rain chances. And there's that low right there, kind of sandwiched in between the two areas of high pressure. Now that will stick around for the next couple of days, sort of uh, fizzle out, if you will. But the nice thing is, even though just the broad picture, we're kind of dominated by the high pressure. This one though is still throwing in little bits of energy. It's not like anything sitting right on top of us. So we've got those little, little cracks, if you will, that uh, some of the energy can, can blossom up into some of those showers and thunderstorms, and that's going to be the case. I think especially Friday and first part of the day on Saturday, a couple of rain chances Sunday and Monday as well. And computer models are being very consistent and still a couple of long range models are in agreement with that big trough digging down here by later in the day on Tuesday to bring a front through late, late Tuesday and into early Wednesday forecast today. One thing for sure, even though temperatures are trending downward slightly, still have a lot of humidity out there, which is going to be feeding some of those potentially heavy downpours. 88 today at noon, 97 high temperature. Yesterday we did hit 100, so we should say just shy of that, still above normal. And of course, it's still going to feel like it's well into the low hundreds with the heat index and uh, you know, an OK chance of rain today. Maybe a little bit lesser chance Thursday that'll bump back up on Friday, mid 90s, normal temperatures, and maybe even sliding down in toward the lower 90s by Monday and Tuesday of next week. And I think Monday, just a smaller chance for uh, some rain. So if you're going to fire up the grill Monday for Labor Day, 
Go ahead. Long holiday weekend. Mike says we'll help the cause if we all forget our umbrellas. Okay, I can do that. Me too. Yeah, yeah we're, we're on, on board. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Sure. Team effort, 650, 78 degrees. And the number of homeless students in the United States is at an all-time high, and that can have an impact on a student's grades and ability to complete their studies. Join us tomorrow on GMSA to learn about resources that can help these students. Outside with live cam, waking up with us on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, pretty murky as we wait for that sun to come up over the Alamo City. The news you need to know before you go and another look at traffic straight ahead. A teenager is in the hospital after what San Antonio police say appears to be an accidental shooting. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live on the northeast side of town. Police have been at this home in the 5100 block of Village Crest near Riddiman and I-35 since about 5 o'clock this morning. They say this is where it happened. They believe a friend may have snuck inside the house with that teen. They were in the process, according to police, of handling the gun when it somehow went off. The 14-year-old boy shot in the chest. He was rushed to a hospital. Uh, we are not able to comment at this point on his condition, but police are here talking to people, trying to piece together everything and uh, uh, make sure that they have all the facts. But again, they are saying this appears to be accidental. Uh, this morning here with this 14 year old boy was shot and seriously wounded, shot in his chest. Reporting live from the northeast side of town, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the dramatic new experiment looking at two popular face coverings, masks with valves and face shields. Why those two kinds alone may be less effective from slowing the spread of coronavirus. This, as Dr. Fauci stresses, a new warning ahead of the Labor Day weekend. That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you all soon. Coming up today on GMS 89, Katie's Science Lab is back. This week, Katie's teaching us how to make our own volcano. So to follow along, you can need some baking soda, you need food coloring, dish soap, vinegar, a container, and a makeshift volcano that you can make from clay or Play-Doh. Make sure you tune into Katie's Science Lab at 9 after Good Morning America. And we have some more problems on the road. Let's check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo. That's right. We have another major accident in the vicinity of the other accident and congestion. This is eastbound Highway 90 right there at that Nogalitos exit. We have another accident currently in the clearing stages. And then look at this traffic backed up all the way to South Cross on those northbound main lanes of 35 due to that overturn 18 wheeler that still has all the northbound main lanes of 35 shut down here in the downtown area. Mike. As you can see in the background there, a couple of breaks in the clouds and a uh, decent looking uh, sunrise. We do have some clouds obviously along the horizon there. It feels like 86 degrees right now, 88 New Braunfels. Still got plenty of humidity around here, but the great thing is we are seeing some rain, some showers and thunderstorms around the area, and we're going to see a few more of those throughout the uh, rest of today as well as the next couple of days and a high temperature up to 97. Bring it, Mike Osterhage. Yes, we're ready. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Be safe.